thanks to today's video sponsor, Squarespace, the all-in-one website building platform to help you create the perfect creative space. More about them later in the video. Wait, remember Dave the Barbarian? It was an American animated TV show that aired on Disney Channel between January 23rd, 2004 and January 22nd, 2005. Yeah, it didn't last too long, but it did leave enough of an impact for people to randomly be doing yard work and go, oh, I forgot about Dave the Barbarian. I hope Jordan Fringe makes a video talking about it. Well, your wish that I totally didn't just fabricate in my head has come true. For today, that's exactly what we're doing. So for our Wait, Remember series here on the channel, let's take a look into what the show was, some interesting info about it, what ultimately happened to it, and of course, my personal thoughts on it as well. So come with me on a journey as we travel back in time to where a big buff barbarian may not be the big buff hero his appearance implies. All right, what in the fun time is Dave the Barbarian? Well, at 21 episodes, Dave the Barbarian is one of Disney's shorter run series, only ever spanning a single season. Better to have happened in general than to not have happened at all. The wacky and wild events of Dave the Barbarian took place in Udragoth, a fictional medieval kingdom filled with myths, magic, and strange creatures both evil and good. If you ever got into fantasy-related properties, all those same ideas, tropes, themes, etc., it's all here as well. At the start of the series, the king and queen of Udragoth have been away from the kingdom for a while in an effort to fight evil around the world. What? A king and queen doing something other than sitting in some thrones for a hundred years? Wow, now that's a surprise. In their absence, the ruling couple left behind their spoiled teenage daughter Candy to be princess, who is now responsible for leading the kingdom until they return. They also left behind their physically powerful but emotionally timid barbarian son, Dave, and the semi-feral youngest daughter, Fang, who always gets called a chimp to help defend the kingdom from any potential threats. Candy is the eldest of the royal siblings at 17. Her character falls to the stereotypes of a cliche spoiled teenage girl, being vain, mildly lazy, prone to gossiping, love shopping, you get it, you know the rest. Despite her age and stereotypical valley girl nature, Candy is no pushover, showing great martial arts skills and strength when needed to defeat monsters, especially ones that are threatening the local mall. Yes, I said local mall. And with a logical head on her shoulders when it comes down to solving diplomatic issues. Candy considers herself both a princess and a barbarian often using the catchphrase, don't mess with the princess. I wonder how long it took her to come up with that one. 16-year-old Dave is the middle royal sibling, as well as the titular character of the show. While Dave looks physically powerful, coming across as a stereotypical warmongering barbarian, in reality, Dave is sensitive and timid, preferring to do things like knitting or cooking as opposed to monster fighting and pillaging. Dave's timid nature is best shown through his tendency to, at least once an episode, get frightened enough to produce a high-pitched shriek or to say his catchphrase, please don't hurt me. Dave the Barbarian will be right back on Toon Disney. Now, back to Dave the Barbarian on Toon Disney. Dave is aided in his barbarian quest, limited though it may be, by Lula, his chatty, enchanted sword who can shoot lightning from the tip of her blade. I wish my sword did that. <laughs> In one episode, it is mentioned that Lula used to be the sword of Argon the Ageless, a famed barbarian hero until one day when Argon used Lula to be the nose of a snowman and left her behind until Dave found her centuries later. Canonically, Lula is related to several other famed enchanted weapons, including Thor's hammer, Mjolnir, who is her older sister. So then where was Lula in Endgame then, huh? The final royal sibling is Fang. Fang is the semi-feral nine-year-old we spoke about earlier with a deep, intrinsic love of smashing things. A running joke throughout the series is that Fang resembles or acts like a monkey, often cueing her catchphrase, not a monkey, when someone calls her that. Trust me, don't call her that. It's not worth it. Despite Fang's endless thirst for the blood of her enemies, she is kept out of most fights due to her age. In the meantime, she dreams of the day that she will be a powerful barbarian princess capable of smashing her enemies under her feet. Candy, Dave, and Fang are assisted in running the kingdom by their clumsy, gluttonous, and selfish court wizard, who is also their uncle, Oswidge. Oswidge is a relatively useless sorcerer whose spells normally do more harm than good, which makes sense when you learn that he never actually went to sorcerer school as a student, he just worked in the school's cafeteria. But even with his limited formal training though, Oswich's knowledge of magic and the magical items around the world does supersede the rest of his family, making him occasionally useful. Much like me, I'm 
am occasionally useful, and most times I'm not though. The final member of the royal family is Faffy, the family pet dragon who is shaped like a pig, acts like a dog, and, and breathes lightning instead of fire. Faffy is extremely dumb. There is nothing behind those eyes, but I love him. The greatest threat to Udragoth throughout the series is the evil, villainous, insidious Dark Lord Chuckles the Silly Pig. Tremble before him. Dark Lord Chuckles the Silly Piggy, yes, you must say the whole name every time, is an evil pig in a tiny velvet cape with the big dreams of ruling Udragoth, using his magical mystic amulet of Hog Swine Boar, which gives him and all swine the ability of telekinesis, shape-shifting, and to uh, blast magic. Dark Lord Chuckles the Silly Pig uses increasingly wild and seemingly gimmick-based tactics throughout Dave the Barbarian in his attempts to take over the kingdom, all of which eventually fail thanks to the royal sibling's interference. While Dark Lord Chuckles the Silly Piggy is the main antagonist in Dave the Barbarian, occasionally other forces pop up as threats to the kingdom. Those threats include characters like Malsquando, the evil sorcerer who actually attended sorcerer school, unlike Oswich, and now is stuck on the idea of taking over the world, and being Oswich's nemesis. There's also Quosmir, the god of freshly laundered trousers, Princess Ermaplots, the evil princess sorcerer of Hyrogoth, who wants to destroy Dave, Ermaplots' mother, Queen Zonthera, voiced by Joan Rivers, who tries to teach Ermaplots how to best be evil. There's this dude, Ned, a, a video game nerd from 1994 who uses a radioactive zipper to travel back in time in an attempt to take over the world using future technology. He, like, gives everyone Game Boys at one point, and when they run out of juice, he plans to take over the world by selling them batteries. He's voiced by Invader Zim himself, Richard Stephen Horvitz. And there's also other various villains and monsters all around bad guys, you name it, there's more in the show. Dave the Barbarian uses a narrator gimmick to introduce the audience to that episode's concepts, or explain certain elements of the universal lore. The narrator, voiced by Jeff Bennett, is capable of breaking the fourth wall and often does so to speak directly to the characters. So you're telling me that Dave has access to shopping malls and cell phone-like devices? Well, that must mean for his knitting hobby that he can make a whole website all about it. Perhaps using, mm, I don't know, Squarespace? So I just want to take a moment to thank Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Squarespace is literally the perfect place to create beautiful websites for any various needs or interests you have. Personal or business related, it don't matter because Squarespace has the tools to help you get your site off the ground and ready for that sweet prime time. Just a couple of few easy clicks and seriously, your site will be up and running. It's the type of functionality we love in a day and age where you can create a nice space for your individual outlets. Whether or not you're on your computer or a mobile device, their design team has created really clean and amazing templates to help you get your vision started. So if you're ever switching between your devices, whether that's a PC or your cell phone, it's a breeze and there's no complications in the functionality between them. So whichever hobby you're expressing on your website, whether that be for knitting like Dave here or a YouTube channel, you know, creating a nice little landing page to tell us about yourself, it's not a problem. Again, just a few easy clicks and you can link all of your videos that you've created as well as all your socials directly on the site. That makes it super simple for you to post and update all of them directly within Squarespace. And all of the content that you put on Squarespace is always yours, 100% full content ownership. Which you know what? That's a pretty nice reassurance. So head over to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Jordan Fringe for 10% off your first purchase. Thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Dave the Barbarian was created and written by Doug Langdale, a screenwriter, producer, and actor who has also created the shows Earthworm Jim, Project Geeker, The Weekenders. Langdale has also worked as a writer on the shows Buzz Lightyear of Star Command, The Looney Tunes Show, El Tigre, and the film The Book of Life. According to Langdale, Dave the Barbarian comedically put modern themes and technology in a medieval setting, pulling inspiration from Hagar the Horrible and the Flintstones. The result was this wacky world of dragons and wizards, but also shopping malls and crystal orbs that worked like cell phones. The subpar ratings it received, however, during its single season eventually got Dave the Barbarian put on hiatus in 2005, a hiatus it has never been taken out of. The show itself, for me, is alright. I don't outright dislike it, but I also don't outright love it. It's very hit or miss for me. I like the setting and the characters, but the problem boils down to the repetition of things. The characters follow the same formula almost every time. Dave gets scared. Lula is like, well, what the heck am I doing here? Someone calls Fang a chimp. Candy does uh, candy things. It gets to a point where I felt like I've seen this all before, because I have in the last episode and the one before that and so on. It's not like what I'm watching is truly bad. It's just less exciting in context of it not feeling fresh. Like there's so much room for barbarian adventures here. And while sure, we do get some of that, it could be so much grander, at least in feeling. The villains, however, really help save the show for me. They are weird.
weird and interesting and usually helps switch things up a little bit. It's a serviceable show that has some great moments, but it's surrounded by what feels like filler. And a few times in this only one season series, I felt like moving on or not wanting to watch the next episode. But then you get moments that bring you back in, like a nonsensical PSA about brushing your teeth. There is that nice charm there that truly is a plus for the show. But if this show were longer than a season and followed the same formula as season one going into another season, I probably would have personally fell off of watching the show in general. But that's just me. What about you? How do you feel about Dave the Barbarian? Do you consider it one of your go-to shows or something you didn't pay much attention to? Let me know in the comments. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this. Follow me on Twitter or else I'll tell Fang you called her a chimp. I'll be back soon with a new video, but until then, later.